giving you a voice, making it loud our own way. Welcome, Welcome to, to the fun. fun. And in number 15, we've got team number 630, Team Pianissimo. So oh. I'll kick things off as this uh, <laughs> Team 630 was in my initial judging pool. So this robot has um, a very unique shooter mechanism. They utilize a pneumatic cylinder to push a wedge between two uh, kind of dog plates that allow them to kind of clutch out their winched back sprung loaded shooter without putting any of that load into the pneumatic cylinder itself. I think there's simpler and more efficient ways of doing that, but I, I gave them creativity for that. Um, I also thought that their details in some spots were lacking. The cat I got was kind of broken. There were some features that were missing. Um, and I think that their intake was also kind of likely to bend given, again, it's the quarter inch aluminum plates like we've talked about. And then the shaft itself is just a half inch hex. Um, but I think that this team deserves to be in the top 15 and I'll let what, what other judges uh, have any comments to add. I'll go next. Um, yeah, so it's a great creative design with some inspiration from 971 and 148 on the Robo Wrangler. Um, one thing I want to point out is the two separate elevator systems, which is a really clever way to, um, because, you know, elevators in this game were typically used for both climbing and for knocking the ball off, is um, a really great way to get fast and strong on for both of those. Um, we've talked about catching a little bit. This robot might have a little bit of a hard time catching if it's knocked off the truss, but um, that's the same for a lot of claw designs. It's just hard to get into that right position for it. Next up, we've got our rank number 14 robot, team number 668. Yeah, so first looking at this robot, I thought that this is an extremely well done, fleshed out design. Um, I really enjoyed just looking at the elevator mechanism and how it was rigged, as well as <clears throat> the attention to detail with the swerve, as well as the electronics. Um, the shooter and the massively cantilevered arm on the elevator, as well as the two arms that you see holding the um, intake wheels, um, those are areas of improvement for me. But otherwise, I, I would still regard this as a fairly effective design for this game. Yeah, this one was in my original judging pool. So, um, I thought it was a really clever design with, um, you know, again, with the uh, using the arm to grab the ball off the top of the truss, and bring it back down to the intake. Um, again, something we've, we've talked about, you know, keeping that mechanism as light as possible is super, super key. And this one was attempted to, to do that, but, um, you know, was still a fairly heavy, heavy mechanism up there. Um, another thing is that this one had a turret on the puncher which uh, we've seen a couple turrets so far, but I don't think this one really adds very much to the robot because um, you know, that keeps you from actually being able to hold the ball too effectively while you're traveling. And you know, having the swerve drive as well and you know, just be, being able to turn with a swerve drive makes the, punt, makes the turret not add a lot to this design. So this robot was the swerve drive. And one thing I noticed right away was that it uses the Neo 550 motors, which I can continue to make fun of tonight. I promise they're good motors. But they're sitting right in the corner of the frame, and there's no guarding around them. And they're poking above the bumpers. So I think that those, because those motors are known to break fairly easily, I think that since it's low down, there would be high potential there for impacts during defense. And those, there's a good chance that those will break, and that would be not fun. Wouldn't be fun at all. Next up in rank number 13, we've got team number 653, Zero. So this was another robot that had a kind of a claw on top of a turret. I thought that this turret was quite well built, however. It had V-groove bearings and a lower thrust bearing. So this is a, I would argue, actually overbuilt turret, given the fact that you aren't even climbing off of this turret. 
It's just with standing robot impacts. Um, I really do think this claw was a little bit small. I don't know the uh, the effectiveness of such tiny mechanum wheels on these large balls that have this cloth outer skin. The teams that did manage to use mechanums when they were first kind of invented in 2014 um, had de re decent success using the four inch ones instead of the two inch. I did really like the polycarbonate plates for the claw itself. I think that is very robust. Um, and it was missing a couple little details here and there, but I think reasonable. Yep. Uh, 2014, uh, JVN invented parabolas and 2591 invented mechanism wheels. Uh, up next in rank number 12, we've got team number 661 818 boomerang. Yeah, so this was, I really like this design. It's again another 254-2014 style design. Um, where it really wins, though, is the, so it also has a grabber from the truss, which it's a very light system, well designed, but I think just because of the design of those grabbers might have a hard time holding onto the ball while bringing it down, especially under defense when you're getting knocked around for it. Um, another thing here for this one is, um, what else did I have in my notes? Um, oh yeah, so this one also had a Neo 550 differential swerve module, which addition into, with a, addition to Neo 550s being a terrible motor for drivetrain purposes, they just do not take stalls well. They are, you know, very low thermal mass. You'll burn them up really quickly. Differential swerve itself hasn't been tested on the competition field. So I'd be wary of putting that on any robot without extreme testing during the summer. I thought the Diffie swerve was at least creative. One of my um, issues with this robot was the adjustability of the hood. So they have two different motors that are remoted to lower the CG way down low on the A-frame. And then they have like a 20 inch path length timing belt that's going up and around um, and that's driving a gear that drives the sector gear of the hood. And my issue there is that over that long of a run without a tensioner, those belts are probably gonna have some flex in them and trying to sync up both of those motors as they're driving different sides of the hood and not having any other encoder on this hood except the ones in the brushless motors, I think is gonna make this really hard to be an infinitely adjustable hood. And I think they would have been much better off just having a two position pneumatic to achieve similar results. Thank you. Next up, we've got T number uh, 643 in like 11. They are <laughs> overbuilt and underpaid. Very so this nice. is a very, very creative design. Um, you can see, you know, it's got round bumpers. Actually, I think like they said it was 24 sided bumpers to keep rules legality or something. Um, but, and they've also got, and they've got four sword modules, of course, on that. They've got the climber that tilts back and they've got, um, and the entire robot, the entire superstructure is on a turret as well. So, um, I think the major problem with this robot is the intake. It is, I don't see a clear path for the ball to get from there, the intake into the shooter, and then the ball will have a hard time staying in the shooter as the intake has to go up to give it space. Um, in addition to that, and there are some unfinished parts of this robot, um, it looks like uh, the steel tape drive that they used for the climber, which was a pretty common design this year, um, or for this game, is not aligned with that. I don't, I'm not sure how that would work at all. So I noticed with this robot that they had something that kind of scared me a little bit. For They had one versatile planetary gearbox that was a Neo 550 that connects to their final mechanism through two sets of bevel gears, which I think that would probably break. This is for the climber, right? I believe so, yeah. Yeah, oh, I was. Yeah. I, also, I also commented on the underpowered climber. I think like they could have fit a larger motor. Um, they could have fit a Falcon or a full-size Neo. I'm not sure why they went with the Versa Planetary bevel on a bevel architecture. 
Curse yeah, of Neo, 5, Neo 550s are good motors, but they're not for every application. Like, very, very much not so. True. All right, before we hit our rank number 10 team, I'm going to kick it back to Tyler to, give, uh, to finish up our giveaway and start a new one. Yep. So we're going to be giving away, um, once again, new product coming in from West Coast Products, which is the Angle Brackets. A pack of them will be coming out to you, a pack of the Angle Brackets. Once again, uh, the winner of that was is going to be... Uh, Mini B Sikamars, congrats. I know I just butchered your thing. I'm horrible at that online, but or live on the air. So, but congratulations uh, with that. Also, I think he's posting the rank, so thanks for that as well, too. So, clearly rigged uh, for that. So, thank you so much uh, for all your help with that. Our next giveaway, we're going to keep on rolling it's another new product uh, from RC, uh, who says he's going to be giving away some drill bushings, a new product, a pack of drill bushings from West Coast Products. Hey, don't forget to go check out West Coast Products' website. Uh, get all the great stuff you need for your robot. Uh, get it, lots of great stuff there. Uh, so once again, West Coast Products, your keyword is going to be MCC. MCC, capital M, C, C. Actually, capitals don't matter. But uh, congratulations once again for our previous winners, and we'll draw for the next one right before number five. Yep. And Next up, we've got our rank number 10 robot, team number 640, Supernova. Yeah, I love this robot. There is a simple, solid design with a clear design for manufacturer in mind. And the attention to detail is unparalleled as well. Um, furthermore, I really like the choice of a fairly simple swerve drive that keeps with modern times. And I like the design of the intake, although I still question the strength of uh, 16th wall uh, one inch box tubing right there. Um, furthermore, I'd like to note that on their shooter, um, they have an electric powered shooter, which is particularly interesting because this is a design that is known to work in the past in 2014. Um, I trust that they have done the gearing, but I also would have liked to see a little bit more analysis, um, deeper within the, uh, design document, but overall just a great job. What I liked about team 640 was their buddy forks were very easy to manufacture. It wasn't a giant piece of billet, which I'll tell you from someone who was on 254 that year is very hard to manufacture and I don't recommend it. Um, what I thought could use a little bit of improving was their intake has the kind of the, the L shape that 254 did in 2014. But one thing that was key was that the size of the plates that are holding the roller and the bearings and the pulley and whatever that's on that shaft need to be smaller in diameter than the spinning surface, be it mechanic wheels, or you know, rubber on a sh on a roller or whatever, and that's important so that you can turn onto a ball that's to your side and pull in the ball and not just knock it away. The kink is there so that you can go around the ball and and pull it in. Um, I think not just this team, but a lot of teams did not include that detail. I wish more had. Uh, but overall, I thought this was a very simple robot. I, it kind of reminded me of um, 2056 actually in uh, 2014, a little bit. So my favorite part of this robot was that they mentioned they had some brakes on the bottom that are rubber pads on pneumatic pistons that plant into the ground. And I know because Team 3200 has done that in the past, that that is extremely effective for playing defense. And I love to see that being used here. The only thing I have to add for this one is that doing the math really quick for the climber looks like it's very underpowered. Um, you know, including the analysis and the gearing in your tech document is a great way to convince us uh, that your mechanisms have enough power, which, um, you know, more teams should do. Yeah, it was a single speed climber lifting two robots just off of two 775 Pros. And there was only two stages of gearing. So I agree that it, it was definitely undergeared. Yep. Next up, we've got team number 651, Mechatech in rank nine. This was a super cool robot, uh, solid intake. So, I, no, not solid intake. The, um, the, <laughs> <laughs> um, the intake single box tubing, definitely not strong enough. Another thing I want to point out is that the two sides of the intake aren't linked at all. So, um, you know, and their setup 
with the bearings such that if one of the sides of the intake gets popped out, then the entire intake roller just falls off the intake. So um, probably put a bit more thought into that next time. Uh, overall, a solid design catapult is good. Um, having the, I really like the climber on this one actually. It had the tape or the fish tape spool again. Um, it was a little bit under geared, und, um, well, it was well geared for climbing, but really slow for knocking the ball off the truss. So um, that'll increase your cycle times a lot. It would be great to decrease that and that'll you know increase your cycling a lot. I also really like the catapult on this robot. That was one of the things that stuck out to me. It looks very well designed and I think that will work very well. My one of my issues with the fish tape climber was it seemed um, a little overcomplicated. Like the architecture is correct, but the details of where the bearings were placed to hold the spool, I did not like. Um, and then one of my things that I also w found tricky about this robot um, was the way that the, like, like Julia mentioned, the intake is has no connecting standoff that is not a live axle, I think is going to mean that it's going to parallelogram a lot. And then finally, the thing that I did really like was the, the adjustability of the catapult is something that very few catathon teams actually model in, but is extremely good design practice during the season. So they had plates next to plates and you could trim the shape of the catapult and its release points to allow you to fine tune that shot. I think almost all flywheel shooters and catapults of that nature should kind of start with adjustability in their design. And I'm saying adjustability, not an extra degree of freedom. So something you can move and tighten down, not an, an extra servo that makes you have to actively control it. Next up, we've got team number 607, Bat Stew, in rank eight. OK, I really love this robot. Um, just I love it, weird linkages so much. And this one had a really good um, intake and catching extension. So they've got. Um, one way for the intake to fold out, then they've got the superstructure to fold out on top of that. And then for catching, they've also got a prismatic joint to extend the length of that a bit more, which will, um, for catching. Some of the things I didn't like about it were um, a lot of cantilever stuff with the pistons. Um, and also a note that the shooter is running across the entire robot on a single hex shaft that'll wobble around a lot and decrease the, um, and really decrease the accuracy and consistency of your shot. Another thing is that, again, the two sides of the intake aren't very strongly connected. They, uh, there is a single bar here, a single plate, but um, you know, that won't, that doesn't add a lot of static strength. Some of my comments were that um, some of the stuff I've already raised earlier in the stream. So you have a system that can open up to receive catching, but you have no way to lock that cylinder out. Um, and therefore it's just gonna open up and you're gonna have like variable ball compression. Your ball compression is gonna vary depending on the amount of air pressure that happened to be in your air tanks when you're firing. So you just can't even like control it. Um, and I think that hurts its shooter mechanism. Um, and then the hex shaft made me on the shooter kind of hurt my head. But this robot had a lot of detail. And architecturally, the handoffs with the intake and everything, that was all well done. It was just those two major things that held it back from a top uh, placing in my book. Thank you. Next up, we've got our rank number seven robot, team number 345, the meme team. So this was my, probably my favorite robot I looked at in terms of how well I think it would perform. Uh, when I saw this robot, it reminded me a lot of 1902's 2018 robot. And when I saw this design, when I opened the CAD model the first time, I thought immediately, wow, this is the robot I would like to build if I was going to compete. The one thing I didn't like was that their intake, how it pivots back and forth and is not on the elevator. They would have to use their climber to 
raise that up and bump the balls off the truss and have to drive around and kind of hunt those balls down as they're in order to intake them and then score, which would be, that would be quite a pain because you don't have immediately off the truss, you don't immediately have control of the ball. You have to drop it on the ground and then go pick it up. So I think that this was quite arguably uh, the most detailed robot submission that we received. Um, and I also agree that this robot, I think, would perform quite well. Some of its issues that I found were the claw is a single fixed size. And I think that'll hurt its ability to catch balls thrown in by the human player or self catching a ball that's tossed off of the truss. Some of the other claws that did solve this problem by allowing the entire claw to be two different um, degrees of freedom or allowing at least the tips to pneumatically actuate out of the way. And similar in vain to this is this claw is a very large puncher, but it's also the ball is always touching those mechanum wheels on the shooter. So now this is kind of a combination of a puncher and a shooter. And really that puncher is now serving more like a flywheel, more like a feeder into dual flywheel shooters. So I think that trying to get that handoff really smooth without having it, like you're hitting it so hard with this puncher, but then the flywheels are like gonna have some flex and vary in them. So I really wish that the claw could have opened up and been just a puncher. Um, and then secondly, the climber is lifted with a pneumatic cylinder and then uses rigging to extend the other stages. And I think that that is a very, very large cylinder. And I'm glad they did the math on it, but the downside is that's a huge amount of air to consume for their claimed, you know, six plus cycles in a match. So a couple of things for this one design um, is, um, you'll notice this one is constructed a lot of sheet metal. It's really nice to see some teams doing that. That's um, a tough, way to design robots. So seeing it become more common is super cool. Um, I like the, so one, the other thing I want to note about this robot is that with the piston, like Torrance was saying, the extension on there means that you don't have, actually have enough force to lift the robot. I calculated about a hundred pounds of force to lift the robot where, you know, it's probably going to be 150 pounds of lift. So, um, you know, having that cascade decreases your force by three times. And that's, um, so you've got to over gear for that. Next up, we've got T our ranked six team, team 649, Sirius Tech. So this robot had, um, I think, a very creative uh, architecture. Basically, this is a claw on a pivot, but then each of the four legs of the claw can pneumatically open up to allow the robot to make this splayed claw you'll see in the next slide um, that will make this probably be the best catching robot of all of the ones we've seen. And I think that the whole getting the ball off the truss is, you know, it's important, but it's also like this catching was so important in 2014 to getting the cycles in. And I think that this will be, you know, quite uh, decent at that. This is also probably the only robot I would actually trust to knock the ball off the truss and get a self catch um, under defense, thanks to the huge claw and the swerve drive and the positioning of the elevator. There were some details missing, like how is the pneumatic cylinder that pokes the ball at the top receiving a pneumatic air pressure line? Um, and then there were tiny bits of the CAD that were broken, but I really did like the creativity in this robot. And that's kind of what elevated it in the scores for me. The first thing I thought when I looked at this robot is that it looks incredibly striking. I think it looks like something you'd see in like an Avengers movie. Um, <laughs> I mostly with the color scheme and how everything is purple and gold, but I also like we just heard really like the claw design and the grabber, and I think it would be very effective for that self catching as their messing with the balls on the truss. And I think that would be incredibly effective. I had a few questions for this robot. And one of them was the intake and the performance of the little spiky bits on the end of the claw. 
Um, this robot is one of the few robots I can realistically see like puncturing a ball and letting it just deflate oh. on the field. Yeah, those wouldn't pass inspection. I had the same comment. <laughs> Furthermore, um, I'd like to draw your attention to kind of that uh, little corner of the swerve drive right there. Um, there's not a lot of material holding that um, drive onto that corner right there. There's just that line, vertical line of material. Um, overall, uh, just having a big hoop around the robot, just like having that connected hoop in terms of like hoop stress would help a lot with the stability of the drivetrain. Thanks for watching. If you want more fun content, be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos. Thanks to all of our co-executive producers on Patreon and Tier 2 Plus subscribers on Twitch, keeping fun loud, live, and independent.